Morning guys, um, well, following last night's uh, video on the Z21 and the uh, Z21 detector, I had um, a few questions about another module that I mentioned. Um, it wasn't actually this one. Um, this is the Loconet version, not the Arbus version. But DigiKeys do do an Arbus one for the Z21. Arbus is the Roco bus and um, the white Roco unit only has R bus. It doesn't have Loconet as well. Whereas the black one, um, it does have Loconet. Um, and I have a couple of customers, well, I have one customer specifically who's asked me to show him how to set up um, this. So I thought, well, as we were on the topic last night of detection, um, I could add to it by doing this quick little summary of the DigiKeys uh, Loconet version. This, this unit does not have Railcom. This is just a pure detector unit to show occupancy of trains in blocks. So I've got the same setup as we had last night. I've actually got Z21 up here as well. Um, so I can show you how the detection shows up also in the app and how that works. So let me just explain a little bit about this unit. This unit is a 16 uh, input detection unit. So it's 16 track sections, um, someone's just asked me a question when's the uh, railcom one coming out all i can tell you is i've seen it um it works but it hasn't been finalized um and yes it, that will have railcom and all the outputs um cust is working on it very hard um he has just given me some sneak previews and yes yep it does work but let's just get back to this one so this has 16 outputs um and it's working on uh, Loconet. So on the back of the Z21, it's plugged into Loconet. The default for this unit when it comes out is address starting at one and it goes to 16. Now, the, in the instructions, um, the way it reads is when you press this program button, um, it wants to know the module address and then the address that this output starts at. That isn't actually quite right. What it wants is when you press the button, the light starts flashing. It wants to know the start address of the module and how many outputs this Loconet module is controlling. So some people have got a little bit confused with that. Um, so I'll just show you what we've set up. So it's come straight out of the box. I have used output one and two, which I've connected to the detection rail. Um, our isolation is here again and the other wire goes to this section. So I've got iTrain open here again, so we can just have a quick look here. So on iTrain, we have it shown detection on the right-hand side. If I lift the loco off, it goes out. I put him back on, it shows occupancy. So that's how it shows in on iTrain. And on the Z21 app, if you've got using the switchboard i haven't said i've just done this quickly to show you guys um we see the detection here and if it was in the other section so i've got this section here and this section here so if the local was to move into this section um it would then show occupancy in there so if i just do that to bear with me if i get the loco to run So as you can see, I set the route in iTrain. The app then mirrors what's happening in iTrain and on here. Um, so the occupancy as the loco goes across that isolated section. Okay, so now it's in both sections because it's getting current draw from both axles. And as it leaves the section, there we go, it drops out and it will stop over there now i train is actually controlling the stopping of this loco so you will see this reduce in speed in a moment as he comes to a halt there we go and the loco stops so everything that's happening here because i'm using i train or if you had some other software jam or i whatever it would be um, would mirror what's going on in both places um, so if I change direction, as you can see on the app, it changes. Okay. So how do we set these modules up? I'm just going to take the loco off a second. Just makes life a bit easier. 
Okay, it is very simple. Um, you need to have um, an accessory uh, of the address you want the module to start at. So I think, let me just check. Let's just go because I can't remember what I've got set up here. Um, okay, so I've got at the moment one to eight. Did you see the accessory address is set up on these turnouts? It could just be a switch. It could be whatever you like. So if I just go back to play. So say we want, oh, I need another one because I need 16. We all make mistakes. So we go add, uh, control, and it's put up another turnout here. So I'm going to change that address to... It's hard to do it to watch and do the camera. I'll change that to 16 because there's 16 outputs of the module. So now this accessory is on 16. Okay. So you could have another one here. Uh, control. With another switch. Put it over the top. So that's, I'll put the 16 one there. And I'll make this one... I don't know, 128. Don't know why I thought of that, but there we go. So now I have an accessory address of 16 and an accessory address of 128. While we're here, I'll also add in uh, two more detectors, one starting at 128. So if we go add detector. Now, this uh, new detector we're setting up is a LocoNet device. And in here, it shows you a number of different uh, feedback detection modules. Um, we can use this one because it's the, kind of the same protocol. Now, the address we want that to be is 128. So put in 128, done. So now that detector is 128, OK? Create another detector. Again, it's another Lake in it. One hundred twenty nine. So now we've got one hundred and twenty eight and one hundred and twenty nine. So what I'm going to do is this was set up as a default address one to sixteen. Now we're going to change it so it starts at one hundred and twenty eight. So we have to get back into the driving screen. Okay, so now we've got our address 128, our address 16, and our two detectors. So what you do on here, when there's, uh, when you hold this button down, you can now see it's flashing a lot faster. So what address would I like to start this output at? 128. So on here, just press 128. What? How many outputs am I using? 16. Hit 16. And that has now set the, the module. This light has now gone back to its originally flashing sequence. So it's it's gone back to I'm ready to roll. And hopefully, when I put the loco back on the track, this will light up. And it does. That is all there is to it. So if the loco is in that section... Uh, we can drive this loco along. We'll get it on the rails, yeah. And now that one lights up. So that's how you set it up. Um, it's as simple as that. What else can I tell you about this? Um, the red flashing light there means there's a loco on one of the sections taking current draw, so it just flashes. If I take the loco off the light, it stops. Uh, but it doesn't, this module won't tell you which output, whereas with the Roker one last night, it actually showed you an LED light here to tell you if there was output one had detection in it, this light was on. So if you had multiple locos on multiple blocks or detectors, all these lights would be on or off depending on where the locos were. Okay, I like flashing lights, but you know, it's not, it's not a necessity, um, but it is nice for visual checking when wiring and setting up stuff, so that's grand. Yeah, so that's how it works. Um, 
if you have LocoNet, um, these modules um, can chain link LocoNet to LocoNet. Also with this one, if you had the first one being LocoNet and you wanted to have uh, S88 one next to it, uh, you can then either use an Ethernet cable, Cat5 cable, loop it across, or the original Ethernet, um, I think it's a six, it six pin, whatever it is, yeah, six pin uh, plug and wire that would link them in. Um, you can use these with ECOS using the LocoNet adapter, um, or you can use the straight S88 version of this with ECOS, absolutely no problem at all either. Um, nice thing about LocoNet compared to S88 is the um, data flow is faster, and that just helps, you know, getting the messages across down LocoNet to the system quicker. LocoNet is great, uh, really works a treat. Um, Okay, I hope that's answered the question of the customer that uh, was asking, and I hope it's given you guys all something else to think about. Um, any other questions about anything else, I'm more than happy to help. Um, we have had another question from a guy about Railcom on ECOS. Um, would this work with ECOS? No, because ECOS doesn't have our bus or can. Uh, will this work with ECOS? Yes, because you can use the local net adapter, but you don't have Railcom. The ECOS detector units, um, the ones with Railcom, it's not the Railcom on every single output, it's only a, a couple of them. So yes, you can have an amount of Railcom with the ECOS, but not on every output. Um, the new version of this that's coming out with Railcom on, I still don't know if it's gonna work every output. Um, through the ecos but as soon as i get one i'll try it and and i will let you guys know um i hope that's been helpful this morning um thanks for for listening and i'll speak to you all soon thanks a lot bye bye